Hey guys, Matt. Andrew. Iron Trap Garage, working on the uh, Forgotten Hot Rod project. So last time you saw Andrew got the seats all torn down, they were kind of messy. Yeah, they were, a little bit. Huh? They were gross. Um, so now what we need to do, and he also got the firewall painted, now what we need to do is just, we kind of got like the front and the back all rust proof, but we want to get a nice coat on the, um, on the floor pan. It does have some kind of etch primer on it, but I'd like to get another coat over all of that and then also get in all the nooks and crannies that have some just a little bit of surface rust here and there. So the whole inside of the car is all sealed up. Then we can start working on our wiring, getting a floor mat put in it, and start putting the interior back together. So uh, we're gonna be using the Eastwood Rust Encapsulator Plus. The nice thing with this is we could spray this out of a paint gun like we did. This is what we used on the chassis when we were spraying the chassis. Um, and you can also roll or brush it on. Since the car's kind of together and we have the shop doors closed, we don't wanna like fume ourselves out. So we're gonna use a, Andrew's gonna use, a roller and paintbrush to just get the last of this stuff all done. Um, it actually works pretty well. I like with the roller. You can actually really soak it into the metal uh, when you're doing big areas. So uh, he's going to work on getting that done and we're going to hopefully get the rest of the inside of the car all sealed up so that we can start just working on buttoning up the interior. All right guys, so we're going to spray the uh, this side of the floor pan down with pre to get any of these smudges or anything like that off because we don't want to paint over it and have it mess up the paint. Be liberal with it. I know a guy that works at Eastwood. <laughs> Spray more. I'll get you a clean rag to do what you got. Alright, so I got painted that rear tray back there and pretty much all the edges where I can't get this big roller into. So now it's time to start getting the majority of the floor rolled and looking decent. As you can see, this stuff rolls on pretty nice and uh, lays out pretty evenly. So, I will say, using that heavier nap roller gets in all the yeah, it's crevices pretty well. Big up to the guy that went shopping. Good job, Matt. Good yeah, job. Thank you. I appreciate it. Wait, you didn't have rollers and trays in stock from yeah, doing the house? Uh, I wasn't sure. I hate going to these. You're like every homeowner. Yeah. You go out and buy new rollers and new trays every time. Yeah, I probably have like 30 of them in the basement. Well, I didn't think I had any real heavy nap stuff because I don't use that in the house. So, so. Working pretty good, Andrew. Whose car is this? I don't recognize it. I don't know. I it's... Regular old Leonardo de, uh, de Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci? Was yes. that what you were going to say yes. just now? <laughs> That's all right. It's called Star Trek. He mixed up Star Trek and Star Star Wars and almost got got a shot. Da Vinci was a painter, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't gonna call you Caprio. You're not that good looking. Some people would beg to differ. <clears throat> Mom doesn't count. Man, what the? Hell? Yeah, it
Clearly building cars wasn't my calling. Maybe painting was. Uh oh, Andrew's gonna become a professional house painter now. I actually enjoy painting for some reason. <gasps> what? You scraped the roller against the fresh paint, man. Where at? On the trans tunnel. I don't think it left that much of a mark. There you go. I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> don't see a thing. You don't even need to put a mat in this thing with this texture. Is this textured or not? No, this is non. No, here's, get the mat. here's gonna be the struggle. You also need to do the side of the rocker area where it meets the running board. Yeah, I'll paint that on with the brush. We'll probably, get, we'll probably want to get a tape down. I'm open to some side work painting jobs. Andrew is now a painter on the side. I only work for a million dollars an hour, yes, so that's all right. Matt, you pay him a million dollars an hour? I pay him too much and it's, it's not much. What? Too much, yeah, okay. All right, so Andrew got that all painted up, as you guys saw, with the Rust Encapsulator Platinum. Um, it's in there. It's dry. It looks great. And uh, it's going to last forever. So next thing I'm going to take care of, uh, Andrew, we were kind of working on two projects at once. So while Andrew was putting Encapsulator on, I was working on the 34. Um, so what I need to tackle now is right in here in the A-pillar area, we noticed that somehow I think... My guess is a mouse nest or something got in there and uh, rotted this all out. So um, we showed this in another video. T today is the time to tackle that. Um, so I'm going to work on number one, getting this little piece of trim here removed. Um, it's a little crunchy. I think it just holds the headliner in place originally, the edges. Um, so I'm gonna get that off, get this bow removed here and uh, we could start working on seeing what we need to do. Luckily, the rot kind of ends just before the edge of the door jam there. So I think what I can do is make a piece that goes right to this edge here, weld it in, I can blend it in so it's not so noticeable and uh, get it a little nicer. The more we talk about it, I think we might work on just doing rust encapsulator, scuff the jams and do them all in rust encapsulator as well to make it look um, one color, but I haven't decided yet. We may leave it crusty, but this area here, we're definitely gonna have to seal up after I fix it. So I'm gonna work on getting this um, so we can take a look at it closer and then also work on making a pattern and our, our patch. All right, piece of that fell off. Okay. Oh. Crunchy up in there. Pretty big area, it's crunchy in there, all through here. Just at least at that seam. That's definitely the worst right in here. To mark out our damage area and then we'll kind of make a decision from there what we're going to do. All right, so we have major rust right here in this seam. It goes all the way to about here, but the panel is actually really solid out into here roughly. 
So trying to minimize the, uh, the length of the weld. So all the way to about, even there is pretty solid. It's just right there is really crappy. So it's probably gonna go out like that and somewhere in here. Go there, go like that. I'm going to work on making a pattern of that first because I'm a little worried that it's going to fall apart when I cut it out. So I'm going to make a pattern and try and figure out the best way to make this um, before we go any further. Alright, so I'm using a piece of chipboard here like I like to use this stuff. So uh, if you guys missed it in other videos, it's kind of, I find it uh, in the warehouse at Eastwood actually when they throw it away. Um, it's on the bottom of pallets a lot of times, but you can actually get it from art supply stores, you can get it at Home Depot and Rolls, um, even upholstery supply places have it. So I'm a cheap ass and I like to scavenge it off of the pallets and stuff um, to repurpose it instead of throwing it right away. Um, but I have a piece I found laying around. So what we're gonna do is use this to replicate our patch. So I've already roughly cut it to length but now I need to make our marks for where we need our bends and everything, and then I can make sure that it fits and looks how I want. So um, we can use this guy to see what we need. So it's about two and a half, just under. And here we're pretty much gone, so I'm gonna just make the whole piece about that big to start, which is about a one inch flange. So one inch by two and a half. So I'll mark that out. I'm gonna actually uh, score it with the, uh, nice stuff. thing about this stuff is you can score it with a razor blade and a straight edge, you can score one side of it and bend it. You can even put it in a break and bend it, you know, the same as you would anything else and it'll kind of hold its shape. So that'll be a good way to do this. So I'm gonna score on this line lightly because that's gonna be our bend line. So I don't wanna go all the way through. Just score it so it bends. Then we can just kind of Bend it right on that line there. There we go. So there's our piece. Oops, sorry, I was doing that low. So yeah, I bent this, and because we got it scored, it bends nice and easy. Um, now you will notice our piece here is straight. It needs to go up in the door jam and curve. So what you need to do is actually, we're gonna have to stretch this edge here to allow this piece to actually curve up and go around in the door jam um, like we want, or I'm sorry, rather down, now that I'm holding it correctly. Um, we're gonna need to actually stretch this edge here. And when you stretch, it's gonna push out, which is gonna push the whole front edge down. So what I'm gonna do is make some reference marks and we'll, we'll after we cut this out of metal, We'll stretch this edge, that'll, that'll pull it down, and then once we get it fitting real good, then we know we have a good piece um, that'll work how we want. So um, I'll show you guys, just for reference here, if we cut this flange, So now, by doing that, that allows, 
that allows this to go down like that and we can still keep the edges up and it can curve down like this so that's what you're doing that's an easy way if you guys are trying to figure out if it needs stretch or shrink uh, you can cut it and see if it needs to overlap it to each other which would tell you it's a shrink or like this if it's opening up it's a stretch so that's what we need basically is for it to stretch like that to bring this front edge down so um, I will just stretch in an area that I think once we put this back up and hold it I'll be able to tell about where it needs to be and I'll mark it um, and then we when I make those reference marks on the metal it'll help me actually uh, know where to do it so I'm gonna get this piece cut out of the metal and then we could start uh, using a shrinker and stretcher to uh, get this thing fitting up pretty good. All right, so I made some marks on this the metal that we cut. Uh, saw the last shot. I, I put it in the brake and bent it 90. So I have a couple little marks in here, uh, and I made a mark where the majority of the uh, stretch needs to happen. Uh, we're using 18 gauge steel here. That's what it seemed to be in the door jam, approximately. So I'm going to hit the pedal, watch the metal move, and then I'm going to move over and do a little bit less of a push on the next one. Probably even a little west on this one. I'm going to go back to our first here. Do a little more. So you can see the piece is starting to get a curve to it. I think we need quite a bit more than that. Um, so I'm going to go back and do a little more on the next one there. Alright, so I left this piece a little big like we mentioned and uh, I've actually changed my mind as we've been going now and I think I'm going to actually weld it right inside the corner uh, on this. So I, uh, I ended up scribing and cutting this on both the end and then also right in here on the edge. I'm going to trim it back probably another eighth inch or so just to give me so I'm off of the corner. But we're going to be welding just on the inside of the corner of the door jam there. Um, we got this all pretty much fitting how I want. It looks pretty good. I can do some final adjustments when we're actually uh, got it all in place with it cut out. But I'm going to actually put a sharp scribe right there. Right there. That's where we can cut along and cut these pieces out. Um, I noticed that this is actually a separate piece. It's spot welded to this inner structure here. So uh, originally I was thinking of cutting all the way up in there, but we don't need to. I think it's just spot welded along the edge there. So we can cut this off, grind away any little leftover that's there. Then we'll lay this back over and we'll, we'll spot weld along the top edge back to that piece there. So I'm gonna get this all cut out.
All right, so I got this patch all welded in. I just hit it up with the flap disc to knock the welds down and then hit it with the DA sander to blend everything in. And it looks pretty good. I am happy with how everything came out, especially with some of the metal being a little, a little thin around here. Everything came out good. It blended into the corner and uh, with just a little bit of primer and everything, it'll all look as if it never happened, which was really nice. So big progress on the car. We got the last little bit of welding done. We got the floor all coated and, uh, and sealed up. And basically now we're ready to start putting things back together. So I'm gonna be getting a wiring harness for this thing. We can lay in, get a rubber floor mat to co cover over everything. And uh, we're still looking for some seat covers. Hopefully we find something, fingers crossed. And then we can start making this thing look like a car on the inside as well. Thanks guys for watching. As always, we do videos on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.